Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me on this Wednesday, November 8th in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. Real Life Friends and CBS's The Young and the Restless co-stars Laura Lee Bell and Trisha Cast are here today to look back at their 37-year friendship while we also get the chance to celebrate 40 years of Cricket Blair. Laura Lee joined the cast of y &R back in July of 1983 with Trisha's Nina Webster arriving three years later in 1986. Cricket and Nina began as rivals fighting over Philip Chancellor, but soon emerged as friends just as Laura Lee and Trisha are great friends off screen. I apologize for the delay, but we're ready to go. Please help me welcome to the locker room, Laura Lee Bell and Trisha Cast. Oh, hi. Hello, hi. ladies. Hi. 37 hi. years we've been friends. Can you <laughs> I, can't I, can't, I can't handle it. <laughs> Well, can can you handle forty years and thirty seven of uh, of you know really the same character and 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 an acting job that long? So, so grateful. I mean, yeah, people say like, oh, that's you know such a long time. You get a new script every day. It's like it's exciting every day. You don't know what's going to happen, and and the challenge of like getting those lines in your head and saying them, and and you know, then it's on national TV. It's crazy. It's like an adrenaline rush. It's it funny, is, you know, I it, sort of love that about I, public relations was always felt like a different day. And then especially in soaps, it was a different day because you got to read a script every day. <laughs> you it, know, so yeah, you I know. love I love the challenge, especially when I uh, first started out of uh, of that quick pace. And, and I came from the stage, so it, it was very much like, you know, a little tiny uh, play every day that you had to like learn the whole thing. So it. It was it was a big rush, and uh, I still just adore it. Well, it was a rush to watch last Thursday's episode honoring Cricket's forty years. Did you yeah. both get to see the air show? I did. Yes. I saw it. What do you what? think? <laughs> I just loved it. It. Uh, I just loved watching the old stuff for one, and uh, I don't think we missed a, missed a beat, huh? Oh, well, that's sweet. What I loved is like, I can look at myself and just, you know, in the olden clips kind of just, I almost tune out. I kind of get a little cringy about it, but I, I can stare at Trish and be like, oh, she's so, like, she was such a little girl and like, she was, she was so right out of the gate. And like, you know, so, so I, I loved, I like watching old clips only to see others. It's really hard for me. Um, to sometimes you know find those to be cute as some people could say but um but you know it was fun it was just enough it was just enough of the past and i loved that there was so much of the present yes did you and remember a lot of those scenes doing them no <laughs> <laughs> and one of the so funny alan i thought about you i mean obviously leading up to this but this morning on kelly and and mark they were saying that he went to the dentist yesterday afternoon and he couldn't remember who was even on the guest that morning. And I was like, okay, thank you. We are like, a, this is, it could have like, he could say that, you know, it's just so much fast pace of the talk show, but did they get that issue on all my children? Because we have this issue of like retaining, 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 forgetting. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't yes. remember half those scenes, but they were fun to see again. Are you kidding? It drives me nuts these days when I can't remember something that was really so recent or somebody's name. And to think what you put into your brains on a daily, you know, uh, yeah, you, I you, you shouldn't hard, be expected. I try very hard not to Google those things. I'm like, like, no, just wait a second. It'll come to you. Go through the alphabet, you know, <laughs> and try and work my brain so that what was that actor's name and that what was the movie he was in? And oh, I love that. Chris just stayed with yeah. us, you know, for a couple of weeks, and we watch Jeopardy every night. This girl is a whiz at facts, so it's weird. Maybe you have like selective <laughs> or remembering of what you can because any sort of trivia, she if I mean, she would just ace that show that that was going to be my next question you know uh because i knew trisha stayed at your house so i love that yeah we have fun like we you know i kind of egg her to have some wine at like 5 30 and she's like oh, no, i'm good i'm good today i've got a really early morning and i'm like it's 5 30 like 
you have, you have 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take much. I was like, yeah, okay. And what was the first night she arrived was the night before we taped the um, anniversary episode. And I've never asked her to run lines um, before we went to the studio. So we, we spent a few minutes that night um, reviewing so we could have a little bit more fun the day of. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Um, do you remember meeting for the first time? I think I do. I mean, I, I certainly re I, I remember the set. Absolutely. So it, and I do, I, I think I, I remember working for this. I might not remember when we first said hello, which was probably in a makeup room, but I do remember the first day on the set and uh, feeling uh, very welcomed and supported. And it, because that's always a huge thing when you come onto a very close knit uh, stage like that, um, there's always, you know, there's the, there's the dynamic, but I was, I was open arms and, and everybody was so welcoming. So I do remember uh, the situation. Yeah, I don't know if I remember the first day, but I, I was the only young person around other than Tom Beards, or maybe you and Tom came on at the same time. So I was obviously, you know, super excited to have someone <laughs> around my age group, but we were super different. I mean, I think Trish would say, like, she walked on stage, like, barefoot, and it's like, not that there's yeah, anything I wrong with it, but I would do that now, um, or, or, you know, didn't think much of it, but just, like, I think you've used that as an example of, like, we were just like, you know, like, you know, she, like we were a little bit more yin and yang back there. And then somewhere along the years, I started, started taking my shoes off. <laughs> <laughs> and, and did you That's hit it off from the get go? <laughs> what? Did you hit it off from the get go? I think we had a nice rapport at the get go. Um, I wouldn't say, um, you know, instant friends, but it didn't take long, did it, Lolo? No, it didn't take long. I, I do, yeah, we have we have so many pet names for each other. But I love that. Oh, sorry, Marley. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ish, Ish, well, I call you everything. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I think it took. I answered I think, anything too, so. <laughs> it took, um, yeah, probably, I mean, we just probably first just got closer. I don't think we hung out outside of the set, but we also were there all the time, so. Um, I think we just really went home to sleep, shower, and come right back. And that is hanging. That is hanging out because you have a lot of time. One hundred percent. We were in each other's dressing rooms, and and but yeah, yeah. as the years went on, um, it just became. I mean, you know, we were yeah, we vacationed a couple times together. We yeah, yeah we she moved into my apartment building, um, and then she I, moved yeah. to my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Getting closer and closer. <laughs> yeah, so it just seems natural for her to stay here, uh, you know, at, at this point. And also, like, now we don't see each other as much. So I don't want to just see her for like two hours on the set. She's got to, she's got to see yeah. it. Hang and, and uh, you know, catch up and uh, do a little bit of partying. And yeah, it's, it's good. I like it. It, it's, it, you know, I was saying to Trisha backstage, it's incredible because like, you know, I grew up as a fan of soaps and I have friends who I met through that, you know, 40 years ago. Um, the fans watching today probably met at different fan events. It is incredible the connection in I, front of and behind the scenes that these shows, bring. you know, bring. Yeah. Well, I also feel like we feel that with our fans, you know, I mean, we're so grateful we're not just like doing this and not thinking about how we'll, how excited the fans will get to see this like today's air show like it's a you know it's like a big deal of a couple of things that happen today and tomorrow so it's like you know we're always like the fans are foremost in our thoughts about like we can't wait to hear what they're gonna think or yeah as, ex ex as excited as you get to go and be and do um that's always in the back of your mind it's like oh man fans are going to love this or, you know, whether the fans think about this. So, I mean, that's why we do. I mean, we're, we're performers and the audience is one half of that. So uh, if they're a big part of our lives. Well, and when you both started, you know, you used to receive snail mail. Yeah. So now um, 
do you yeah, appreciate you know, I prefer snail mail? <laughs> do you prefer the snail mail? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm all about positivity. So if it's positive, you know, send it yeah. my way. Right. Um, <laughs> people, you know, you, you know, look at the world around us. People are out of line many times and, yeah, and, and okay. use those channels, you know, yeah. to, to spew ridiculous, you know, unnecessary stuff. <laughs> So yeah, forget that. Well, Laura Lee, I was I was watching your dad's interview for the uh, Academy, and he was talking about um, your first time on YNR at nine years old, on the airplane with David Hasselhoff, and he he says you were never the same after that. <laughs> Do you remember that? Well, I remember that. I don't. I don't. I think it was the when I did cricket for two days where I was never the same after that. The the airplane scene, I mean, I was in David Hasselhoff's presence, so I was probably, you know, forever <laughs> gaga about that. But I just said like, oh, that was so easy because I was an extra, like I had nothing to do except, you know, sit there. <laughs> so I just, he, it just gave, he that was not the impression he wanted me to get because it's anything but easy what the casting crew pull off in a day. So, um, so I think he just was like, okay, well, you know, that was, sweet and um let's let's you know that 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 didn't work out well and then i i you know i still don't know i wish i could talk to him now because um you know for sure cricket was only supposed to be two days i just don't know if he would have had that character if he hadn't had me in mind um but that is really when i got the the bug ah, get it <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, got new, I got new material all this time after. Um, I love that. Well, the fans were asking, where did the name Cricket come from? But somebody said, was the other option Lottie? Is that true? Lolly. 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 Yeah. Oh, um, interesting. So yeah. glad it's I, Cricket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Cricket's a much better. Um, yeah. I loved what you just said, though. I wish I could ask him. I think yeah. it's so... The, I sort of have... Uh, taking that in from this show and talking to people over the last three years, we all talk to your families, learn, you know, when you have the opportunity to ask questions, there's yeah. so much we don't. Yeah. I mean, the good thing is I, I know how much he loved his work. I know how much he loved, um, you know, when I was doing the summer storylines and, the, you know, they had, you know, a lot of, uh, when Danny and Nina and all of us were doing that, it's okay to say no. And they had, you know, tremendous impact back then. Um, and he was proud of, you know, so much of it. And and every single day that he wrote, he was excited about. So I don't have any doubt about that. But, you know, specifics, yeah. I never really want to be like, so tell me more about me. <laughs> um, <laughs> he started on the shows I grew up with on As the World Turns and I think Guiding Light, you know. Uh, yes, too. I, I, I was such fans of, of both shows as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I Trisha, what that. do you remember about her mom and dad, William J. Bell and Lee Philip Bell? I remember it, her dad was very funny with like the dad jokes that I just <laughs> loved. And then her mom was just um, a model of grace that I uh, still am in awe of. She was just so gracious and then also Riley funny she had a she had a way of making a joke and you're like was that a joke that was funny <laughs> so uh, she, she was uh, she was very uh, mischievous and oh, funny. Uh, and then of course you know they're they're unparalleled talent and um, and influence on our genre ah 100% and just, just the best people just the greatest family. I love that. Brenda just commented after you said Lottie. She goes, Lottie Romilotti and laughed out loud. <laughs> oh, and that would be a tongue twister. That would be a twister for everybody. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Sherry I says... Romilotti. What would you say? I don't think his name would have been Romilotti. They wouldn't have done it to us. Was he already a character when you came on, Laura Lee? No. Right. I don't think. I don't think so. I well, don't, I don't know because uh, yes, no, maybe uh, yes. was Patty See, on? Was Patty on yet when you came? 
Patty with Patty with Paul's Weaver. sister. You know? Oh, Patty, no, Patty Weaver. Weaver. Because that's uh, their brother right. and sister. Oh, really? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting her know. <laughs> um, gosh, Could you yeah. imagine if she I would suppose I would suppose maybe not for the summer storylines, but maybe by the time I became a, we became regulars, like you know, we weren't just on June through August. Michael was already on. Doug for sure. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That's funny. Sherry says, Laura Lee, thank you for all the behind the scenes fun stuff you do at YNR. The fans really love yes. it. Yes. <laughs> I am going to continue, you know, continue to do it. I'm a fan. I I love I mean, everyone wants to see behind the scenes. Everyone also thinks that we're very similar to our characters, um, which is not the case for a lot of us. Um, so yeah, I want to do it. I'm so I'm so happy that you appreciate it, and I will do it as often as I can. It's truly about me not annoying my cast members and being like, "Can I ask you to hold this? <laughs> can I?" Hold it? And be like, "Hey, hey, hey!" Now I'm like, I look at them and they're like, "What do you want?" <laughs> well, as hard as as hard as the work is, it also shows. I mean, you you have so much fun. I mean, there's so much laughter behind the scenes. So much. Yeah, so much. And so, yeah, if we can if we can grab that and put it out there. Um, you know, some of it rated R that you can't show, but some of it, you know, you can. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. But, Absolutely. Um, see that as well. <laughs> Trisha, what do you remember about your audition for Y&R? I remember it really clearly, oddly enough, um, because I have the, really the worst memory, but I do remember very clearly going into the artist's entrance, going up to the third floor, the little, and I, uh, I went and checked in and you know what, you write your name down and uh, there's a long hall between the elevator and the, the office. So I went back down the hall and sat by the elevators and read my stuff and then even went into the bathroom right behind it and, uh, and uh, kind of did it in the mirror sort of, which is odd for me because I, I didn't ever really do that. I think it's because it was almost, um, it was the first time I, I was starting to audition without having my dad around. And my dad would always run lines with me. So, uh, so that's why I kind of, um, I remember uh, applying myself. And, um, and then I remember meeting, uh, uh, oh, that's, there's that thing where I have to Google the name. Um, Wes that Kenny. Wes oh. Kenny. <laughs> And um, and then I think that it was the, the same said stay. And so I just, just stuck around. I think I went down to the commissary and um, and I went back up like an hour later and met Ed and uh, Bill. And um, with the, I, I don't know what, I don't know how, what feeling I have t toward the whole thing. I just remember it, you know, and I remember it fondly. Well, and here we are 37 years later. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. I can't imagine anyone else as Nina. I can't um, imagine my life without being part of that show. I mean, it, it's, I mean, it's such a huge, it's like, you know, half my life now. Oh my gosh. More than half my life now. Yes. Yes. Okay. But that's a good thing. We're smiling about that. That's a good yes, thing. Yes, absolutely. We're so <laughs> grateful and lucky. Yeah. 100%. Laura Lee, I was listening to an interview you did with uh, Dishing with Digest, where you shared this story of planting thermometers around your house so that you could stay home. And you were certainly on a mission. Could you share that story? I, I mean, I think it's brilliant. Yeah. Oh, my poor I mean, I... <laughs> My, my children have been a little bit complicated at times, and it's a whole for sure payback that, of what I did. But yes. <laughs> and, and your mom and dad are smiling about that. Uh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, um, I my father would watch Young and Restless, and then he would go on a phone call, which would be with Wes Kinney or Scott at that time, and say everything that he loved about the show, and then give some notes about what he maybe didn't, what he expected differently if there was ever those days. Uh, I found those phone 
calls so fascinating. So I was like, I don't want to go to science class. I don't want to go to math class. I want to stay at home and listen and have some Campbell's soup. We we're big Campbell's soup people and listen to these phone calls. <laughs> so I started presetting around between 100 and 101 thermometers around our house. We don't probably have three, which was, I don't know why we'd have three, but um, I would either use my electric blanket because we lived in Chicago to kind of, you know, get it to go higher and shake it down. Or I would put it under hot water and shake it down because it would immediately go to like 104. And whatever room I was in, I'd say, would I have a blanket or, you know, something like that. And I would do the swap. And, you know, it was not concerning for maybe the first week, but once I was like out for a week, I was like, this is great. Um, this is so awful, I know. But um, so yeah, after about three, four weeks, the school was concerned. And um, and so they realized like, you know, I went through some, <laughs> through some testing like that. And then they brought me to the psychiatrist and was showing me the pictures, you know, do you see the sunshine or do you see the devil? And I, I was like, I know what they're trying to make me do. I'm like, I see a sunshine. And they're like, oh, she's okay too there we don't know what's going on the reality was i just wanted i just found home <laughs> more fun did you understand what all he was doing uh i mean i we were rarely in la so n not really but i just knew that i would then go back and watch the tape show after hearing his conversation and try and understand what he yeah. meant by the notes um so that was my like that that to me was way more entertaining than any school so um yeah i did it i did it i own it I can't <laughs> and it's a great, i mean that is you know for being in the business oh right now i'd be i i'd be like we can't have a digital thermometer <laughs> <laughs> did you ever want to write um, well, I mean, I've written some web series and stuff, so it's but for, yeah. for YNR for and R or BNB. Yeah, that's sweet. Um, uh, I mean, oh, you know, I just, it's so hard because when you know people so well and you know, I, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, not that it's a yeah. we'll see, but like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Absolutely. I, I, I love acting, so I wouldn't. If it had to be one or the other, I wouldn't want to be. So yes, if it's both, um, well, yeah, we'll see. I, I'm kind of dabbling in a, a couple other ideas right now with good old Martha Byrne. So um, I love that. I love your friendship with Martha. Yeah, me too. So we are, um, you know, moving along in, in a few interesting directions. Did you, did you and she meet because of World Turns? I mean, because you said you were a fan of the show too. Yeah, I was a huge Dusty and Lil. I was a I was a Dusty and Lily fan and I was a Holden and Lily fan. Me yes. too, oh, me too. <laughs> oh. um, so yes, one year I was in New York for the Emmys and I got to hang out with her and Brian and we had some fun and we stayed close ever since. I, I love that. Yeah, she really had had struggles. One, one was hotter than the other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, as I said in the intro, you both were fighting over Philip Chancellor and, and you know, have had many men over the years. Um, do you have some favorite scenes of working together? Uh, I Any scenes? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are scenes that are memorable. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I think... Um, I think one of the scenes that stands out to me is when we raided some brothel dressed as hookers or <laughs> sex workers. Uh, and uh, do you remember this? I, I mean, in a very weird place in my brain. <laughs> I, I, I'm tuning it out if I can. <laughs> yeah, so I just remember the absurdity of the whole thing, and I don't mean the, the script per se, I mean just <laughs> us being dressed up like that and, and um, just having a good time with it. We were, we were, we were giggly. Buried alive too, because I only saw that picture a few Buried months alive. ago. That was really, I, I don't think I could do it at this age. I've never, we were submersed. We were, it was a big box and they put us in and then they put the the floor on 
and then put sand all around us. And I guess bugs eventually came into play, but that was probably poster. I don't know. I don't remember that. But we had to, they had to take engineering fives and we're, you know, we're in this box with just this with sand. Yeah, yeah. We, we should have got combat paid for that. <laughs> Who do you think, you know, you, you both were so young when you started. Who do you think you learned the most from at, you know, out of the gate? you know, on set? Uh, Jeannie, Darlene. Uh, I, uh, I watch Eric a lot too. He's got a very natural uh, way about his performances that I admire. How about you, Love? Well, yeah, I mean, for sure, Jeannie. Um, I was scared of her but she, she was so good with us. She was so, um, the help in so many ways. But yeah, I mean, to watch Eric and to learn that it's okay to not do the lines, to take moments, to have pauses, to do looks without saying a thing. Um, it's so helpful to learn that you can take those moments. And we've never had you know, directors saying, I mean, you know, they'll say maybe people can taste, but like, if it, if it calls for it, it's so great to have, to have, um, I love that. Can you share memories of Jeannie and Darlene? Yeah, well, I mean, most of my memories uh, with with Jean are, you know, the recent ones that that little stretch that I did and I think it was 09 or something like that. She she's the one that put me up at that point. And I was like, you know, basically living at her house and and I just really loved, so it would do, just added a whole nother dimension to our relationship. It was always, you know, professional and we'd see each other, you know, at parties and stuff like that. But now we were like immersed in the day to day and, you know, picking up things from the market for one another and stuff like that. So, uh, so I, I really treasure um, those I think it was, I don't know how long it was, maybe a year that I was uh, frequently uh, in her presence. And uh, I just loved how body she could get and how very seriously she had, uh, you know, words of advice for life. And, and mo most of it was like, yeah, whatever, you know, so she was very good at that. And I, I'm, I need that in my life. That's a good thing. That's a good uh, part of um, my uh, my personality that that needs like tweaking. So it was nice to have that around and uh, just it, very dear. And then Darlene scared the the Jesus out of me on a daily basis. She was just so uh, you know broad and and she and the lines you know, and she didn't like. She didn't like come out of character all that much. So, so uh, she was like, she scared, she literally scared the hell out of me most of the time. And, and I took from her that wonderful, uh, broad, um, uh, melodramatic kind of thing that she had that I really loved. It, it, she's, I mean, the character was fabulous. She was lovely. And um, my 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 look of fear with when I was around her was not acting. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I remember Darlene from an episode of Charlie's Angels where she was a pretty scary character. If you ever saw it, yeah, I would in love to see that. Seventy series, yeah, she uh, she was a scary one. <laughs> Charlotte had some, uh, I think, you know, fight scenes with Darlene in that. <laughs> oh, that would be great. Yeah, it was great. Uh, Laura Lee, Jeannie, memories of Jeannie? Yeah, I mean, we were so lucky to be so young working with her. And she did, she, you know, she like taught, I mean, Trish didn't need a lot of teaching, but she helped me a lot in a way where, um, you know, it was just, it was just subtle where she wasn't like she would pull you aside and be like, here's what I need you to do. Like where you felt like you were doing something wrong. She would like, you know, pinch you during the scene and and get you out of like thinking too much or or she would just do it in a way where it was like a buddy helping a buddy rather than a you know an adult yeah 
teaching a child, but she was she knew what she was doing. She was definitely teaching, but she was doing it in a comfortable way where you didn't you weren't scared or um, felt like you weren't doing well. She was so encouraging. And I mean, not only that, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, no, finish. Because I go ahead. She didn't even have to say anything sometimes. Sometimes she would just go, you know, mm -hmm. she would just, you know, she would just let right. you know that, uh, or you like, to like, you know, bring it up or, or, you know, cool it off. Or, yeah, she was, she was so subtle and got her point across clearly. That yeah, was so cool. One day, one day I was on vacation, I'm sure with Scott and, um, I think it was that far back. It must have been. And she, I got word, Jeannie Cooper wants to talk to you. And I was like, oh, my gosh. She's never <laughs> called me like like this out of nowhere. And she said, you know, Corbin really wants you to do this movie, Carpool Guy. And I was like, Gee, like it was the most like crazy phone call because I was like, I can't believe. She's like, would you consider? I was like, oh, my God. Like, yes. I mean, I can't believe Jeannie Cooper is calling me, asking me if I'll like do something with her and Corbin. And like, that was really fun for me because it was a whole different character. And then we all went out and promoted it. And I got to spend time with Jeannie, you know, again, in a different way where she was interacting with fans, where you just got to see her in her element and just see her love for the fans, the fans love for her, our love for her. It was just a big, you know, it was a big love fest. But um, uh, yeah, I, I was so happy to have had that later on in, in our lives because it was just a whole different experience. It was, we really, I think we traveled like three or four weekends. And um, and she was so proud of Corbin, obviously, and Colin, like you know, all her kids. She's her kids are amazing. Um, so yeah, I, I just having she's Jeannie in life is a huge gift. Yeah, she certainly left a mark in Genoa City. Oh. And I don't. I'm sure you've seen pictures in our hair and makeup room. She is a life size cutout right behind our makeup chair every morning, and it's like there's just something so. It just feels so right. I love that. I love that. Tony says, hey, Laura Lee and Trisha, great to see all of you. First of all, happy 40 years on y &R. And Trisha, been following your career since It's Your Move in Santa Barbara. <laughs> um, you have to talk about uh, the Jills, uh, Brenda Dixon and Jess Walton. Um, Trisha, you got to work with both. Am I correct? Uh, I'm sorry. There's a little thing coming up on my screen. Say it again, darling. Sorry. Jill, Jill Abbott, did you oh. get to work with both Brenda and Jess? I did, indeed, yeah. Uh, Brenda was first, of course. And um, uh, much like Darlene, again, a, a very uh, intimidating <laughs> presence. Um, uh, but so I, I liked working with her. I, I, I learned a lot from her. And, um, and then when Jess came on, um, a friend. And so that was very, very cool. Yeah, they, they worked very differently, um, but um, I think both had a legitimate uh, claim to that role. Mm. Yeah, it's incredible how different they are, but they were they were both such great chills. I mean, and yeah. are. I mean, just yeah. Well, and that's almost like Terry Lester and Peter. Completely, exactly. Completely. Yes. And both left, you know have made a mark as those characters, Brenda and Jess and Peter and Terry, like completely, but wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. And that's, that's I mean, usually people have, you know, switching over, trying to get used to a, a new person playing the part is such a transition period. And, you know, sometimes it never happens. You just like love that character, but you think it's someone else, you know, like it just, it doesn't really compute, but you're right. So perfect with, with all four of those scenarios. Um, never a doubt that they weren't the character and um, incredible actors all the way around. Oh God, I mean, yes. You know, and you know, you, you, we, we, you uh, talked about David. I mean, I remember Snapper so well, you know, <laughs> my mom must have been watching. I remember Snapper, wow. like, you know, all yeah. of that. I don't remember, who was he paired with? Who was, was there a woman Snapper and somebody? I think he was with Chris, um, a Brooks girl. Um, yeah, 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 right. But you know, someone, someone who's watching might know better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and, and they. It was Chris and Snapper. I, I have to say that I remember that embedded in my brain from from childhood. Snapper. Yeah, Chris and also that name is not common for us, so that's yeah, probably I why. I don't know where he got that one. <laughs> yeah. 
We have no full names, never. <laughs> That's another question for dad. I love that. Yeah. Um, speaking of mom and dad, is there is there anything that would surprise the fans to know about them? Well, I mean, I would think just how, how Trish said, like, I mean, it, it was such a not serious, like, household in terms of we were always joking around. We were very routine. Um, we were a huge TV family. We would watch, you know, um, game shows or or Heart to Heart or Love Boat. I mean, it was just, it was just, uh, TV was always on. Um, and, you know, it, it's just, it felt right. And it was like, we'd race home to all kind of, you know, meet up and watch something. Um, but yeah, I mean, for someone who really had to crank out this kind of grind, um, he was shockingly relaxed. And I think, I mean, probably martinis may have helped at night. It's always like his prize. It was like, you know, the day he got his prize. But, um, but no, during the day, I mean, he, I think it's just the, I think it's the, if you love what you do, he, you know, he did. And he, when he took a break. So and the, good. And he was happy because he probably just came up with some great, you know, idea that he was excited about. And so, so, I mean, I'm just so grateful that, you know, they, they instilled in me being a workaholic. I, I love to work, you know, um, whether it's, you know, I'm, I'm always doing something. I rarely say, I used to te say, tease my mom. Why don't you just sit down? Can you, you should sit down. You should sit down. She's like, you know, no. And now, you know, I'm the, I'm the non-sitter myself. Um, but, you know, I, I, <laughs> I love um, it was just a lot of, it was a lot of, you know, work and play and togetherness and, and we were the happiest when we were together. And, um, yeah, it was just, it was really, a, a, not a very showy family. Um, we were, we were pretty low key, but uh, all we needed was each other. Uh, beautiful. It was always very you, warm um, and fun. At the yeah, bell house. Yeah. It seems that way. Um, but you know, coming in as dad's daughter, you you didn't always introduce yourself, right? As a bell. Yeah, I, I would be like, maybe they don't know. Maybe they don't know. <laughs> I'd be like, hi, I'm Laura Lee, thinking maybe they'll think Lee's my last name. And <laughs> then I would try and, you know, be one of the gang, which I mean I wasn't I wasn't putting on a different facade. It was just what what I would do. But um it's and, understandable. I think any of us would sort of feel that way. You know, yeah. you just want to prove yourself. I didn't want someone to be like, oh, I, w I have a story about something. And then they're like, oh, wait, <laughs> I wasn't going to tell anybody a thing. I was like so stuck on being, you know, one of the, the team, team player. Which yeah. yeah, I don't think years. I knew sometime. I think someone really? had to actually bring my attention. Yeah. And it was, wow. it was later. It was late in the game, too. Yeah. No, I mean, now I say it with pride, but that's inc that's incredible to me. I mean, yeah, you that that would have been wild. I don't know. Yeah. It, it makes sense, though, if if that's how you did it. Right. You know, it makes sense. She might not. Yeah, well, not for sure. I'm, I'm pretty dim, so it could have been that. No, <laughs> that's not true. But she may have been a little like, yeah. Laura Lee said you could whip our butts at Jeopardy, so I don't think you're dim. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, the, the trivia for a reason. It's, you know, it's just useless information. No, it's very important. <laughs> but you're, you've got it You've got it up there. Well, well, let's talk about the men. We'll start, Laura Lee, start with you and, and Mr. Damien. What comes to mind when you think of Michael? I mean, you know, we just have, we have fun. I, I feel super lucky that he, um, he sort you know, we sort of have the same sense of humor in terms of, um, he's not, res he's not reserved to do anything in front of the camera. So it may be, you know, it may be a dorky choice that we choose, but like he'll, we'll both go for it. Um, and you know, we just, I mean, we've, we've grown up together. It's just, it's so easy. It's so great having him back. Um, it's so, um, yeah, I mean, I love that my character has only had two, you know, guys. And, like, I I scored heavily. I mean, like, yes, Martha with, with Holden and, yeah. and Dustin. Yeah, you did too. I, Michael and Doug. Are... Yeah, I mean, Doug and I as well. Like, he's one of my closest friends, and we talk all the time. And um, I never had to prepare for emotional stuff because he would say, hey, just look at me. And I'm like, okay, got it. 
Um, and that's, you know, with both of those, it's just a gift to not have to ever think of anything else but the scene. You know, it's just, um, and we and we all have a lot of fun together. I mean, we are, it's just rehearsals. I wish people could see rehearsals because they're so, they're so zany and they're so um, light that, um, but it's where we try some stuff out and if it works, it comes into the scene, uh, for real. And if it doesn't, it was uh, a good try. <laughs> well, and it's been really exciting knowing, you know, that he has returned and just seeing, you know, on social media, yeah. people, you know, people are, you, you have, you know, the Paul side and you have the, yeah. uh, yeah. the Danny side, Danny side. <laughs> but I mean, so, nope. It's gonna, it gets so good. Um, and you know, with Phyllis involved, it's just, it's just juicy. And, um, and yeah, I mean, look, it was impossible for, for when Michael and I were, when Danny and Chris Cricket were together, and then suddenly it was gonna, Michael was gonna leave. It was a very big undertaking to try and get the audience to sway over to Chris and Paul. It was a really, um, you know, we didn't know how we were gonna do it. And, and, you know, luckily my father wrote it in real time and built it slowly and naturally. And, it wasn't an immediate, like, now I'm with you. Um, so, you know, if we're going to have to sway it, see if we can sway it back a little bit, um, everyone's going to have have their thoughts. And I adore them both. I would love to work with them both um, at some time. Um, so, you know, I, I don't come after me. Like, I, I, I want I want them both. If I could have a perfect world, I'd like to spend Monday through Thursday with Paul. And <laughs> 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 and that, and it's funny, you know, people, um, I think because your last name is Bell, think you have that power. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, and I don't, I literally, right before this, I was racing to see what the script was that I just, that just came in because I have no idea what's going to happen. I love that. Yeah. I love that. We lost uh, you. <laughs> yeah. Alan, connecting you here with Tusha, she got knocked off. Um, just one second. She's like, I don't need to listen to her talk about those men anymore. <laughs> just coming back. Uh, I there she, yeah, there she is. Yeah. It just was probably, it seems like her internet might be a little slow. She's trying yeah. right there. There you are. You did it. Were you like, I'm done? <laughs> yeah, I, was, I wasn't getting enough airtime. <laughs> I'm not going to say a word for the rest of the time. <laughs> Oh my God, that, that's hysterical. Yeah, it's the internet. Yeah, the internet does that. It plays tricks on us. Uh, trust me. I am in the movies well, here. Yeah. Well, that's what uh, we were saying backstage. She's able to connect. <laughs> um, talk about your men, starting with Tom, which is what I remember so much of, Philip. Yes. Well, I think the, the the most attractive thing about Philip to Nina was that he wasn't hers, so she had something to to go after. I think that that the challenge was everything with with uh, with Philip. And then uh, let's see, oh oh oh, uh, you know, then there was um, uh, Michael Corbett. Yeah, what was his character's name? David Kimball. David Kimball. He was awesome. Yeah. Wasn't he? <laughs> oh, it's so wonderful to hate. Everyone loved hating him. And uh, oh, and then Scott was just such a nice, sweet, uh, always, well, until the very end, always. Um, <laughs> it was it was really nice to have a, a relationship that wasn't like fraught with drama all the time. It was just, we had a really nice little thing. And then I guess, I guess another girl came along and that screwed that up, but isn't that yeah. how it always goes? <laughs> Very blessed with wonderful actors and 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 good chemistry and and always a good story. Well, and that David Kimball story, people still, you know, they go on and on about it, and and people yeah. want to want to believe he's still not dead <laughs> under the dumpster or in the dumpster wherever we he never was. Quite saw him get crushed, but yeah, it was pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> that that's the best thing about daytime. Um, and I have to ask about yeah. uh, a, a mutual friend who worked on uh, Guiding Light as well, Jeff Branson, who played your son. We love Jeff. Yeah, I just love Jeff so much. I would love to see him and Ronan come back. That that would be great for me. I think we 
uh, worked together well, and he was just a nice, nice guy. Yeah, he's a good, a, a, talented as well. Yeah, and as, as, say, astronomically. Trish, on the air show today, I haven't seen it, but I think it's the first day of her also finally getting to work with Connor, uh, with Champ. Oh, my son. Oh, uh, yeah, my son. Um, the fans were talking about that earlier. Because every time, explain what yeah, happened. Yeah, um, and I think it um, went well, too. I, I really like him, and I believe we worked together really well and uh, had an immediate mother-son vibe going. So, yeah, it was good. What was the question? Like, you know, the last times you were supposed to work with him, and there was, like, either it was a COVID thing or yeah. it was, like, there was – it just kept missing by that much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. I think Two other times I was meant to uh, work with them, but something got in the way both times. And uh, um, so, yeah, finally, uh, we, we got to do a scene together. It was great. Well, I, you know, when I think of all of you and I think about Mrs. Chancellor getting in the way of, you know, anybody trying to, you know, get around her grandson was just, you know. Oh, yeah. She was she was not somebody to mess with at that time. Let's say. It was such I don't know. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she she was she was she was. Uh, it was just so so much fun to watch. Um, Laura Lee, I mean, your son Christian and daughter both now in their twenties. Um, yep. A lot of the fans were asking, any chance they want to follow in <laughs> your footsteps? Well, it's weird. I, it's so funny. I haven't really brought them to the set in, I would say, like 15 years. They've, they, they, it was my adult time to kind of go to work if I was working and sort of hang out with my friends. So I really wanted to be like, I'm going to go have a play date. Um, but now I, I was actually looking at one day coming up where I thought maybe Samantha will come. Um, and our son, every once in a while, will say like, hey, I've been, I was, you know, like, thinking about this idea, this concept. So I, I mean, we're nowhere close. I, I would be surprised. I really like editing. Like when I make these videos for the fans, like I'm just sit, you know, I'm trying to come up with my music and like the cuts. Oh, you go to the full extreme. You, yeah. You're not just like recording and putting it out there. You're. Oh, I do it all. Oh, I'm I love that. producing. I'm a woman. Yeah. Whatever. Fill in the blank. Trish was the <laughs> woman, what? Editor or, or whatever. No, the Jack, Jack of all trades, the uh, You're a show Jane of all trades, the Jane of all trades. But I, I brought that up because I said to my daughter, you should you should try editing. You should, you know, in college, there's an editing class. You should try it. It's so fun. You get like so much joy of like cutting it even like a second more to make, to tighten up the scene and all that. And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we'll see. I, there's, no, there's no signs of it yet. But um, do but they we'll have see. ideas of what they want to do? Uh, not really. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. young, yeah. they have their whole lives to do it. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Hey, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a absolutely. Um, are there actors, uh, maybe now on the show or just over the years, that you had wished you both had had more screen time with, or or any screen time with? Trish, do you want to go first, or are you thinking? I mean. Uh, yeah, so uh, I like working with Peter. I worked with him just once, and so I, I like to work with Peter more. I think he's a, a, a charming and um, a dynamic actor. Um, and uh, let's see. I wish I had gotten, <laughs> again, the same character, but I wish I had gotten to work with Terry Lester. And uh, let's see. Who don't I work with? Yeah, I mean... I worked with everyone just a little bit, um, but uh, I'm I'm real happy with with my little crowd, and I'm really happy with how um, the writing has been uh, uh, um, taking into account history and things like that. And uh, so I, I'm 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 happy, but I'll work with anybody anytime. <laughs> and you know the fans pay attention to that history very much. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And we love them for that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of like, you know, when you talk about your own family or we talk about our own families, it's like you you look back at that stuff. So completely. To, yeah, it's uh, to recognize it's it, it, it matters. 
it's a daily connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean that, you know, that's the other thing, you know, through, through starting this at the height of the pandemic, you know, uh, it just reminded me of that deep connection of that daily being in their living room and how much yes. it matters, uh, you know. Yeah, we've been know. hearing so many incredible stories. Like, um, you know, I started with you when you were a teen and then we had babies together and you know, now my kids are going off to college just like yours. And, you know, that when you hear something like, like that, you really realize that you have you have been a part of this person's life. And it's it's huge. Like that's it's so such a nice compliment. And um, you yeah, know. I, I, and I was talking to Alan earlier, um, and I'm, I'm not sure you were there, Laura Lee, that the nature of the relationship is kind of different than I think just a normal work relationship because when you're when you're acting and when you're working, you're you're kind of exposing yourself like a lot you know you're you're digging deep you're making mistakes you know the, and people are part of those mistakes and people see you at some some pretty fragile moments and to mm. have those kind of relationships that have lasted this long is i think really unique and unusual i mean because there are there are there are certainly relationships that are formed like that in in the short term like a movie or a series like but they always you know no, yeah. And right. uh, this has gone on for now, what is it, you know, 40 years. And uh, so that's a, a unique thing. And I'm, I, I could, I can't imagine my life without my friends, Laura Lee at the top of the list there and, uh, and the show just to be, to be an actor, to, to, to work, to get the opportunity to apply my craft for this long. Yeah, it's fun to like say to Peter, like, hey, how are the kids? And like, you know, you're kind of envisioning because time goes by so fast, like that they're still not young, young, but young ish. And he's like, oh, you know, we were planning the wedding. We just had the wedding, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, Grand it's, grandparents. Yeah, yeah absolutely. We just well, love stories. You both must have people who have said, you know, my child is named Cricket or Nina, or Laura Lee, or Trisha, you know, yeah. I mean, because I, I see it all the time in just messages I get from fans that, you know, knowing I'm talking to you, oh, I named my child, you know, after this person. And yeah. What a, that's what a really testament. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's huge. That's so, it's like, so, so flattering. And yeah, there was, um, uh, Kate had a, a, um, a mother and son on the set the other day, and he was named after, I want to say Nick, but I could be getting it wrong. Someone will probably correct. But um, it was just, you know, it was so great. And he and he was, you know, he's 20 something and he was he, he watches every day and he said it so proudly. It was it was great. I just <laughs> those stories never get old. They're, they're well, really and that's like, you know, there's so many um, layers to the legacy that your parents created that, you know, long after, you know, it, it just keeps coming up. Yeah. It's it's even fun to be on set because one of our boom operators, like now his son is our cameraman, and there it just there's yeah. so many in all avenues of the show where it's just you know still one big happy family. However, you know wherever you look around, it's just it's it's. Um, well, we have a Lisa watching right now who says I was named after Lisa on As the World Turns. <laughs> <laughs> Eileen Fulton. I mean, how great is that? I mean. To doesn't get better. No, 100 per, 100%. And you have so many um, staff on your set who have uh, come from Guiding Light and As the World Turns too. Vivian Gundiker and Kristen right. Doherty. Who I, yeah. 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 I love yeah. all those people. An, an incredible group of uh, people. Um, Trisha, can you talk about um, one of the fans was asking, do you memories of Jason Bateman working with him early in your career? Yeah, I do. As a matter of fact, I worked with Jason on, on um, first on Little House on the Prairie. I Which is went, incredible. And, yeah, so, um, and I believe that, that I, I could be wrong, but I think that um, he, he 
he was influential in my getting that part for it's your move because he remembered me from that. And uh, yeah, I mean, funny timing. Oh, and um, the thing that I, um, I mentioned when I was in the audition, cause I, I was audition, I auditioned for it's your move with him. And, uh, and he looked just like my brother at the time. I said, you look like my brother. You feel like my brother. You're just like my brother. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, and yeah, I mean, incredible timing is the two words that I use with Jason B. Um, speaking of funny, did either of you listen to Smartless? Uh, I started, I, 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 I was so late coming to it and I, I did listen to a few episodes. It's very funny and very fun to listen to. Very fun. If you're ever on a road trip and need something, it's, it's, yes. it, it, provide, it provides, you know, we all need humor. It's, it, it's perfection. So as we talk about Young and the Restless, 50 years, you know, to, to each of you, Trisha, I'll let you go first. What, what does YNR mean when you think of Young and the Restless? Well, like I said before, it's, it's been more than half my life uh, being a part of the show. I mean, I took a little bit of a, of a break, but uh, <laughs> for good reason. And, um, you know, living out here, something like that. But um, I can't imagine my life without it. It means, you know, my livelihood for one. And it means uh, that I got to play this great character for for so many years. And, you know, not, be, not a lot of people get that opportunity. And mm-hmm. then, and then a whole other level, I, they're my family. I, all of my friends, you know, most of them are from that show. And so it's just a huge chunk of my life. And I'm so grateful for it and just love it. And, and grateful for being able to do it. The fans have, of course, made that possible that they tune in and they, they, they make our lives um, uh, possible. Pretty much from the get-go, Cricket and Nina, you know, the fans fell in love. It's so nice to have a female friendship. I think it's so sweet. And I think it's so, you know, we encourage each other and we are there for each other. And there's no, there's no backstabbing and there's no, you know, it's, it's just 100%. I wish you well. It's if you need to talk to me, I've been there with you the whole way. So I get it. You don't even have to like explain what you're talking about. Like I know. Um, and I don't think there's any other female relationship like that on, I mean, on date, but not for this long. I, I don't, I don't, I, I, I haven't don't seen it. Yeah. So we, we don't take that for granted. We love seeing the clips. It was so great that they really keyed in on that for the anniversary episode. Um, well, they keyed in on the friendship. I mean, that was what was so great. Just her, you know, Nina giving advice and trying to get you to, you know, move on and see, you know, yeah, it was. And the little nudge, like, you know, it was, it's like, you can't decide something, but if your best buddy says, just do it, then you're like, okay, yeah, maybe yeah. she's fine. <laughs> That's what I needed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Be- besides wine and Jeopardy, what, what do you both do for downtime? Oh, well, she's knitting. She's carbs. What did you say? Carb pumpkins. Oh, yeah, we carb pumpkins. (laughs) We do, yeah, carb pumpkins. Um, I mean, yeah, we're in the kitchen. She's helping me with the dogs. Um, Yeah, I'm crocheting or doing a crossword puzzle or, uh, yeah, dogs. I love the dogs. I love being around them. They're great. My husband comes in and they start talking and then I'm, over here. <laughs> Who introduced yeah. you to uh, crocheting? My grandmother, my, my oh, dad's wow. mom. Yeah. Um, but like, you took a I huge took, break, right? You just suddenly picked it up again, like 10 years ago yes. or have you consistently? I don't uh, know. Yeah, not even that, like a couple years ago. So I had learned, of course, when I was a, when a kid, not of course, but when my, my grandmother would come and visit and I was, you know, uh, a, a child, 
she, she, we made a blanket together. So she would start it off and I would do the stitching and then she, she finished it off kind of, kind of thing. And, you know, it was good. It was fun. I, I, I liked it. And then I just sort of picked it back up again. And um, I really love it. Well, wait, and I, you quilted, mm -hmm. you quilted, because you, for, for our wedding, I, Trish made a beautiful quilt. Yeah, do I quilt? Um, that was from, from, my sister gave me my first quilting lesson. And uh, yeah, I've been making those, you know, on and off. I've always got something. I've got a dollhouse and the works for my niece and they are great niece, actually. And, um, uh, is that what it is? My, my sister's grandchild? Anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm always doing yeah, something. I know. Always. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying new things. I, I tried painting once. I wasn't very good. So I haven't done that in a while, but yeah, I'm always trying something new or, um, you know, working on something that I, that I'm confident that I have skills in. That's great. And that's a great lesson for people. Try some, you know, always try. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Laura Lee, any projects that are upcoming that we should look out for? I mean, I was in a meeting the other day again, like we're Martha and I are having, a, you know, as always, we have a little bit of, of uh, it's gone back and forth a lot between because of COVID and stuff, but um, we're really trying to get a couple of projects in the producing uh, avenue going. Once the strike is over, right. like I'm, I'm, I always love um, doing a, a good lifetime movie or some other project like that. But for right now, I'm telling you, the scripts I'm getting are so good that like I'm so happy um, about what we're going to be doing next week and the week after that um, I'm good. <laughs> That's great. Well, it is such a pleasure, and and I love you know. When those producing things that you and Martha get off the ground, we'll get you and Martha here together. <laughs> you know, yeah. everyone thinks because you have like a certain connection or family name, it makes yeah. it easier. Oh no, oh no. So yes, we will we come see you, we'll toast with you, we'll-, we'll that, that is, I was listening to Barbara Streisand yesterday on Howard Stern. Yeah. And, um, you know, he's asking, she's 80 something, you know, you have you you say you have these projects you want to direct. You're Barbara Streisand. Yeah, you know, <laughs> they think just because she's Barbara Streisand, oh, no. she, okay. she can get you right. know. Yeah, no, I everyone has to I guess pay their dues and put in their time. Martha and I have, have been very patient, and we just know that when the time is right, um, it'll happen. And I I just you know I get excited for the what if. I'm again I'm happy with what I'm doing right now. So I don't sit and dwell about it or. It is you, can, you can see the excitement and you could really, uh, you both yeah. radiate the love for Y&R. So <laughs> yeah. congratulations on Thank 40 you. years of Cricket Blair. That's Yay. an incredible accomplishment. And I thank you. Stay here for one second while I sign off, ladies. Okay. Yes, thank you so much, Alan. You're so thank welcome, you. such a pleasure. We appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining today. Thank you again to Laura Lee Bell and Trisha Cass and Matt Kane for always helping out, for spending this hour with me. Please join me next Wednesday when Christo Sandros and Mary Beth Evans from the Bay stop by. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so down below. Turn on notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. I hope you all have a great weekend. Stay safe, everybody, and I'll see you next week.